What's up everyone and welcome back to what is another mystery bit video here on Tetrabit Gaming where I explore mysterious and unsolved gaming phenomena. And if you enjoy these mystery bits you guys please be sure to let me know by leaving a big thumbs up or comment down below. And with that said, grab your tinfoil hats you guys because we're diving right into the conspiracy zone today. The 80s. This was a decade of weird fashion, corny sitcoms, End of the Cold War, and some of my favorite music and movies. This was also the decade that video games achieved mainstream popularity in the West, as characters like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Mario, and many others became instant hits on consoles like the NES, Commodore 64, as well as in arcades across the country. And among these arcade games, there was one game that to this day is shrouded in mystery. Yes, I'm talking about Polybius. And no, not the ancient Greek historian type. Polybius is an arcade game urban legend that is said to have caused many of its players to suffer from amnesia, hallucinations, headaches, and the list goes on. It is said that it may have even been the cause for some to commit suicide or to become anti-video game activists. Polybius is believed to have been released out of nowhere sometime in 1981 to several arcades in Portland, Oregon. And apparently the game was really popular with arcade goers and often formed long lineups as people waited their turn to play. And among the symptoms I listed earlier, other strange things were allegedly reported by players, like hearing a woman crying in their head or seeing eerie faces in the corner of their eyes while playing the game. And apparently, according to the owner of one of the arcades that had this game, serious looking men in black suits would often come to the arcade to collect records and unknown data from the machine instead of money. And this data is believed to have been the information on the effects this game was having on people. When starting Polybius, it was noted that the developer of the game was shown as Zenus Loschen, which translates directly from German to Sense Delete or Sense Clear. And that's a pretty odd name if you ask me. And then, just as fast as this arcade game showed up in Portland, it soon disappeared without a trace, never to be seen again. Until about 1998, when a guy posted on coinop.org claiming he had a ROM screenshot of the original game, claiming it was a weird looking abstract action game with some puzzle elements. This however contradicted other claims that the game was either an action space shooter or a maze game. To this day, the story remains an urban legend as there is no physical evidence that the game or any of the symptoms it caused ever existed. But is that because it never happened, or is there something else at play here? Now I don't know how I never heard about this mystery until recently. It was even referenced in an episode of The Simpsons where the game only had one button and pokes fun at the urban legend by having a big property of the US government stamp on the front of it. Yet the real question remains, is this urban legend fact or fiction? Now first of all I just want to say that if the company making this game literally called themselves Sense Delete, then they weren't very subtle with what they were doing. The most likely theory, however, of what actually happened is that these stories are exaggerations of documented cases in which a few players who played an early version of the arcade game Tempest had motion sickness or epileptic seizures from the game in Oregon in 1981. As to why Men in Black may have been seen in arcades at the time, records state that during this time the FBI raided several arcades across Portland as the owners were suspected of using a few arcade machines for gambling, which could explain why Men in Black suits were often seen inspecting the arcade cabinets. But again, is that the truth, or a convenient excuse? Although the effects of subliminal messaging and whether or not it could induce psychosis or illness is still debated, subliminal messaging has been being tested on the general public since at least the 1950s, and I don't think it's out of the question to believe that the United States government might have had a swing at it too. Now do I think the government would go as far as to disguise an arcade game as a way to perform psychological testing on children? No, not really, but I guess you never know as the United States government has had some pretty crazy psychological experiments in the past. One prime example is the documented CIA mind control program Project MKUltra, in which people's mental states were manipulated by use of various drugs, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, and other nasty forms of abuse, similar to that scene in Call of Duty Black Ops. And interestingly enough, as mentioned earlier, the game is clearly named after the ancient Greek historian Polybius postulated that people should never report on that which cannot be verified by interviews with witnesses. Which is interesting, because that is exactly what happened with this arcade game. So was Polybius really a psychological government experiment, or is it just an overhyped and overblown myth? That's for you to decide. And that's it for this mystery bit guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like down below, and if you didn't, please let me know why and how I can do better next time. And if you guys like these mystery bits and want to see more of them, or other similar videos, click on one of the following annotations or check out the rest of my channel. 
And if you want to stay even more in the loop, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which are all linked in the description below. And as always, guys, thank you so, so much for watching and for all your support, and I will see you in a bit.